Oh my word, that's the wrong point.
330 plus a meter, that is if we have three pipes next to one another. So what the standard system says is that our maximum width that we would go on either side of our pipe with the insofar as excavation is concerned is 500 on either side of the pipe. So irrespective of what the depth is that we are going to. So at any event, we would stop at 500 on either side. I just wanted for us to, to note and to, to, to take note of that. And I just wanted for us to ensure that we, that, that, that we grasp that concept there. Okay. Now take us back to our our drawing. <clears throat> And we were in our drawing, we were busy with the excavation for our pipe trenches. And when looking at that, notice that that is the section that we are dealing with. Now we've already measured the section to not exceeding one meter deep. We already measured that. And that, our dimensions that we had determined there was the 3.11, which was, which was taking the two meter, because, and, the, and, and how we calculated that was very important because these are the dimensions that we would, that we would take note of. Looking at the difference between those two, where I say my 101.3 minus my 100.5, that gave me 800. That gave me 800. So that was 800 over there. And then we, but we also, the 800, and we had to add the 100 millimeter for the sand that gave me a depth on that point of 900 millimeter. And then we had to determine, calculate, determine, and to find that cutoff point of where the meter mark is, which we had done last week, which we had, which we had shown, we had indicated, we've done the sketch as to how we would go about doing that. We've done the sketch as to how we had uh, created our, our, our equation and whereby we have then determined that the, the length up to a distance up to a meter was arrived at 1.1 meter and our overall length of of piping not exceeding one meter deep was 3.1 so 3.11 that was 1.1 one one so that was 3.1 meters the length up to a meter deep and the depth that we determined was on the one side <clears throat> the depth that we had to determine there was that on the one side we had where we had our 850 our 850 over there and when we had our meter so we said that it was 850 plus the meter, and then that divided by two gave us our 925 millimeters deep. The average from this point to the meter, that average was 925 deep. Just a little recap on the excavation. Now we need to now take it one step further. We need to take it one step further now in ensuring that we now can determine from a point of a meter, we now need to take it to our next point at, at two meters. We need to take it to our next, our next point at two meters. And what we do, if we have a look at what the difference is, this depth here, we said was at 1.8. That's including the 100 millimeter sand under the pipe. 
Okay, that's at one meter eight hundred. If I look at this difference here, and I take that and I say one hundred and two minus ninety nine point eight, that gives me a depth of two meter two hundred. But if I add the sand, I then realize that that there is two three hundred. And we know that when we measure the excavation for the pipe, we say not exceeding, not exceeding one meter, exceeding one and not exceeding two meter. So we now need to go because we find that this year exceeds two meters. And again, we now need to find that spot over there where my two meter mark is. And when I look at my two meter mark, and this is what I would be doing here, I know that this depth here is 1.8. And as I take it through to there, that's just now, I will, I, will, I will draw this a little neater, but it's just to show that at the invert level, that this is what we basically have from the depth as this flows towards the municipal connection because I have 1.8 on the one side and 2.3 so as I take that sketch that I have there I will blow that up and place that elsewhere Remember that we have 1,800 and 2,300, as we've indicated. So, I now know that I have already measured up to not exceeding 1 meter. I've already measured up to not exceeding 1 meter, and the length of that pipe there is 10 meters. And we've calculated that the distance up to that one meter was 1.1 meter that we took that up so what it tells me is that i now have the 10 meter minus the one one and that will leave me with eight meter 900 exceeding one not exceeding two meters deep 8 meter 800, uh, sorry, 8, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. Can you tell me? It is 8 meter 800 and 90. It's 1 meter 100. Right? If I go and I say that and I have my Because one 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 point one one, not why do I my brain is not working properly this morning. So it's one point one nine, and that gives me my eight eight ninety because my distance over there was already one point one one. Okay, I now need to find that spot of that two meter. And what do we do? Again, I create a triangle for myself, and I know that this distance here, that this distance here is 500 from that 1.8 to the 2.3. I know that this distance here is 200 from the 2 meter to the 1.8. And when I measure this, I know that this distance from there to there overall is given to me on the drawing as 14 meters but i need to determine that x from there to there how do i do that i already have determined with this 
I have in my dimension column where I would in my in my description where I'd say excavate for pipe trenches exceeding one meter, not exceeding two meters deep, and backfill to pipe trenches as before. That will be my, that that will be my description. So I have that length there of eight point eight nine. My trench width. Remember that I've just gone to the standard system now, and I said to you that it's three hundred on either side. And as we go another another meter down, we add a hundred millimeters to our width. <coughs> so, so when we have that, we, our previous pipe was we had hundred and ten, three hundred. 300 and we said as we go down we add another 100 and if I add all of those that gives me 18 so it's 0 0.81 wide and my depth that I have now the depth that I would now go with here would now be from the meter that I've had the meter the other trapezium that is formed there, it would be a meter plus the one eight. So I'm just going to write meter plus one eight and divide it by two. And that would give me a depth, average depth of one nine hundred. So my average depth would be one point nine. And that is for the section over there. Okay? For that section over there, that is, I now need to determine, I don't need to determine what this distance there would be. So what do I do? I say X over my 200 is equal to 14 over my 500. And I say that, and I say x over 0 0.2 is equal to 14 over 0 0.5. You all with me? Thumbs up will help if you're with me. And that gives me my distance of x equaling 5.6 meters so from there to there it will be 5.6 meters so it will mean that my distance would be 5.6 my width i calculated as 0. 81 that is there and that will be my width of 0 0.81 and I now need to determine what my average depth is going to be my have to determine my average depth I will now have to use the depth of 1 meter 800 plus the depth of 2 meter 300 because I need to find Sorry, not 2 meter 300, my apologies. Not 2 meter 300, the depth of 2 meters, because I need to find that average depth there. So I have 1 meter 800, 2 meters, and that gives me 3 meter 800 divided 2 gives me. One nine, depth of one nine. So my average depth for the not exceeding, for exceeding one, not exceeding two meters, would be one point nine meters. Okay. All clear with what I've just done there. I have now made my way up to Mano two. From nano one. From nano one. I've made my way. I know that that drawing there looks a little cluttered, but I feel it's 
better for me to explain it in this manner so that you can identify on the drawing with the the um, with the sketch and with me having shown you the, the the invert levels of the drawing so that we can better understand that are there any questions before i move on to this next section All good. I see thumbs up. Right. Great. So I will move to our next section now. As I move my drawing across, remember that we have now, that 14 meters, we have now worked our way. Is it up to there? Or where do we work our way to? So we're going to work our way up to there and I now need to ensure that we now get our excavation to the municipal connection. I've ascertained that this depth here is 2 meter 300. We've gone in from there to there. We went in 5.6 meters. So the distance, the remainder of the distance there would be 14 minus 5.6, excuse me, 8.4 meters to there, right? And this depth is ascertained as Two meter three hundred. Two point three at depth there. And I need to determine what the depth is at the municipal connection. At the municipal connection, I now need to go in and I say that I have <coughs> I have a depth there of if I take that 101.7 minus 99.2 gives me 2.5 and I add the 100 millimeters that gives me 2.6 2.6 uh, meters okay so now it shows me that what I would have here is from my line of 2 meters remember this is my 2.3 so from my line of 2 meters down to the I would have this would be my line of two meters and that is my two meter 600 and I can see my trapezium over here again and I'm going to convert that trapezium from here and I'm going to and a trans transfer that so that we can now determine exactly what it is that we need to, to, to calculate. But when I look at this, there's one thing that is very significant that I see. I see that, yes, I am now, I've, I, I've done, I've done, I'm now sitting in my next category. And what do I see? I notice that both that and that falls in in the category of exceeding two, not exceeding three meters. And I do not extend over into the next category of exceeding three, not exceeding four meters, which makes this a lot easier for me. All I need to do now is to take this tra this trapezium that I have here and calculate the average average depth over there and box your uncle. I will be a for away. But is that what I'm going to do? No, I'm not going to do that. First and foremost, I will be using that 8 meter 400 that I have there. 
I'll be using that first up as 8.4 and my width would now be, I would now add another 100. Remember that we were on 300 plus 110 plus 300 plus 100. We will now add another 100 to give us a width of 910 millimeter. Because I'm now going to my next category of exceeding two, not exceeding three. So it's 8.4 multiply 0 0.91 that I've just calculated on the one side. And I need to determine what this average depth over here is. And I need to determine what that average depth is over there. And uh, to get that, it will be my two meter plus two meter 300. And I divide that by two, and that gives me two one five zero. So it is two point one five average depth. That is for that section over there. For my next section, where I now know that the distance is eight meters, I can place that eight meters over there. I have my width, which we've already calculated as 0 0.91. And I have, and I now can determine the average of 2 meter 300 plus 2 meter 600 gives me 4 meter 900 and divide that by 2 gives me an average depth of 2450. Now you might ask, but sir, Will it be wrong if I take the dimension from there all the way from the two meter all the way to the 2.6? Who was thinking that I'd much rather do that? You much rather do that. Well, let us see. What does that, what is that? Does it give us the same answer? Yes, of course you can do that, but why am I not doing that? I'm not doing that because I know that I I had to go through the extent of calculating what the distance is up to two meters. So I'd much rather split that. But let us see if we do use that. Does it give us the same? Can somebody calculate there for me your length of 8.4 plus 8 is 16.4 multiplied by we have 0.91. Right? And then what do we multiply that by? We multiply that 2. by 2.3. 2. Um, send it. 2.3. And that gives us a total cubic meterage of 4.33 if you if you do, if you take that the 8.8.4 plus the 8 meters yeah. times 16.4 times 0.91 times 2.3 2.3 correct yeah, and, and, and for these two together what do you get there
gives me 34.27. So the average of is similar. Yes, 34.27. Why did it take you so long? I've calculated that like five minutes ago. <laughs> okay, you see there that the difference there is what is the cubic meterage difference? Point. The difference there is 0 0.06 cubic meters. I think that is accountable for from from the the rounding off. Otherwise, if you take all the decimals, that would amount to the same because it's yeah, yeah. out out truly the same. Exactly. But the, the the reason for me doing this, uh, the the way that I've done it, was in order for 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 me to get you to to understand the consistency and 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 to consistently remember that you need to take this and that into account. If you, if of course you had to do uh, what I had done at the end, at the at the, 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 the second take here, where I just added the 8.4 to the 8 and used the average of 2.3, you will of course be correct. You will not be wrong. You you, you might you, you you could be more correct. You know. So, but if you if you do that, it is fine. I will I will, I will work with that. But I just needed for us to see that. You, where you can do that, as I've highlighted, that both of these uh, sections fall into the next category of exceeding two, not exceeding three. So you could have taken the overall because you did not have to split that. I'm just trying to, and the reason for me doing that, as I say, purely is, so should we go into the next category that you know that we need to keep the one side on its, on its own first step before moving over to the next section? So, yeah, for this section, from man or two to the municipal connection, <coughs> or either for, for, for that point before man or two, uh, 5.6 meters in between man or one and man or two, from there to municipal connection, that all sits in the same, in the same category. Right. Now. You said that for the excavation, that the pipe, if we look on the drawing, we look on the drawing on the specification, it says that we need to allow 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter of sand, top and bottom of my pipe. Full length of my pipe to be covered in sand, 100 millimeter thick, top and bottom. And that says that. It says that we would have 100 pipe thickness and 100. So when we have to now work and determine the sand filling that has to go in with this pipe, we would use that depth of 310 millimeters deep. Okay? When we go back, let us go back to the standard system again. Because there is, and, and this is where the standard system had actually changed from from previous. Now you guys would not know the the, the previous edition, the sixth edition, but the sixth edition did not necessarily allow for. Uh, and not, oh, let me not say it that the sixth edition said that we had to deduct for for pipes and that. But the seventh edition, as it is illustrated here, and as I will be showing and po or pointing that out to you now, it says that when we do the sand in our, the sand filling in our trenches where the pipes are concerned, when we do, 
the trench is there for the pipes. It says to us that we would have that no deductions shall be made for pipes not exceeding 200 millimeters diameter. So that speaks to the bedding under and the filling around pipes comprising of sand, crushed stone, concrete, etc. Now, in the sixth edition, we had to, wherever we had wherever we had that with sand and the like, wherever we had that, we had to deduct the pipe from the sand that we had filled in there. That is why if you have a look at, at what uh, I had uploaded onto the, uh, if you have a look at, at what I had uploaded, you'd notice that there is a deduction there. But the new standard system tells us that no deductions shall be made for pipes not exceeding 200 millimeter external diameter. And what is the diameter of our pipe? The diameter of our pipe is 110 millimeter. And 110 millimeter, last time I checked, is smaller than 200 millimeter diameter. So, what it says to me that whatever the sand is that we will be measuring uh, in here, the sand full, we will not deduct as we will conform to what the standard system says. Okay. You with me? So I can go back into... I can go back into my drawing and with my drawing what I would be doing now is the following. I now have all my links I have the distance from there to there I have that distance down there and I don't need to ensure that we get that we do the expression. But remember that we had now gone into different sections with our excavation. Um, if I to draw that from the wall down to the manual connection where we started out with our depth of our depth that we had, uh, I think it was, was it 850 where we started out? At the onset, the first one that we that we had done here, where that was our 850, and where we had our 2 meter 600 down there. So our pipes would lie down there, and we'd have the sand around my pipe, and the pipe from my from my RE, we'd have the sand around that. But when we look at how much this, how much sand it is that we will be using in here. It would only be for a depth of the thickness of my sand would be 310 millimeters. Right? We've, we've ascertained that. We've calculated. We said 100 plus 110 plus another 100 gives me 310 millimeters. Okay? So when I now go and I will measure this and I say sand filling supplied by the contractor embedding under and around the pipe and deduct back filling to pipe trenches as before. 
Now that refers to, because remember, in our description for my trenches, we excavated for my trenches, we said there, my description said, excavate for pipe trenches not exceeding one meter deep and backfilling to pipe trenches, including compaction. And I need to deduct that backfilling. And I need to also need to cart away this excavated material. So it's extra over excavations for carting away surplus excavated material. And I'm going to use this in my different, I'm going to use this in my different categories in which I had included that in my excavation. It's easier because those dimensions have already been determined for me. So I'll just use it, and you can, of course, go through and do it all the way, but I'm doing this specifically so that whoever checks what you're doing can see that whether you had, in fact, transferred the correct dimensions from the different sections to the section we're measuring the sand fault. My very first one we said was 3.11. And the width of my trench was 0 0.71. And we had 0 0.31. And that is a section not exceeding one meter deep. The next one that I have now, <clears throat> where I use the dimensions over the exceeding one, not exceeding two meters, I would then say that I had 8.89 and I would add 5.60 and add those two and that gives me 14.49. And that 14.49 multiply by 0 0.81 because now my trench in meter to two meters have gone a little wider by 0 0.31 and that is exceeding one and not exceeding two meters. My next one, where I now, now calculate and determine, I know that the next category or depth is exceeding two meters, not exceeding three meters. And again, I will now go in and I will add what I had, because I now had 8.4 and I had 8 meters, 16.4 meters, 16.4, 0 0.91, because we've gone a little wider, and 0 0.3, and 0 0.31, and that will be from 2 to 3 meters. And when I excavated, I also had the depth or the length of my pipe for the RE, that section over there. We calculated that length and we determined that that was 1.2 meters deep, 1.2 meters long, so that was 1.2, 0 0.71, and 0 0.31, and that is at my rotting eye. That is for my sand. For my sand, where I know that it is a sand filling around my pipe over all those sections, I've covered that and I've also covered everything through them. And I'll repeat, we will not deduct for the thickness or the diameter of the pipe as the pipe does not exceed 200 millimeters in diameter as per the standard system. So cancel that deduct that you see in those in those notes. Right? Okay. I go further and I now look at what the standard system, what the notes, what the notes speak of. Uh, 
pertaining to my inspection chamber. The note says that my inspection chamber is one meter one hundred by one meter one hundred internal dimensions. Internal dimensions with a one brick wall thickness, 150 millimeter thick concrete base, a cast iron cover lid with 100 millimeter thick concrete surround. So if I could go and I need to and I had to make a sketch, I will do the following. That will be a brickwork. Concrete. No concrete. So the internal dimensions would be one meter one hundred of that panel. You then have 150 over there. And we would have a hundred millimeter over there with my lid that is placed over there. So I want to measure this and we understand, we know that when measuring there, we, we can go and we can give it one description and we measure that as one or manual one. But because the two manuals are sitting at different invert levels and the invert levels that I would show and the invert levels that we have here, when we have a look at the at the respective manuals and we have a look at the at the invert level <coughs> invert level of manual one we know is at one meter eight hundred not one meter eight hundred my apologies it's at one meter seven hundred and manual two sits at two meter two hundred the difference between that there gives me an invert level of of one meter two hundred of two meter two hundred. So when I now do my description, when I do my description and descri describing this this inspection chamber, we now indicate and we say that it is the inspection chamber size eleven hundred by eleven hundred internal dimensions what am i doing i'm taking what i see over here and i'm just replicating i'm just replicating that internal dimensions by one meter 700 millimeter deep at invert level which is there at invert level constructed out of one brick wall in one is to force cement mortar. Obviously, we will have to indicate what the mortar, uh, the cement mortar mix is. On 115, 150 millimeter thick, 15 MPA concrete slab, including a cast iron double seal manual cover and frame with a frame embedded in concrete surround, including channeling and benching. And there's one of, and we will indicate that that is for manual one. Nothing. You all you do is we have we have just taken that the notes or the specifications from the drawing, and we've transferred that to this to, to the description column, and just adding uh, the the concrete strength, adding the the, the mortar mix, and uh, and that. <coughs> 
with increased say dirto, but at two meter two hundred millimeter deep at invert. That's at man or two. Because we have calculated, we've determined that the invert level is at 2.2. And of course, when I look at my manual from the top, that is my lid. That lid needs to be able to be lifted. And we need a lifting key for this manual cover. You just need one because it'll be universal. You can use the, the key on, on, on any of the manuals in there. So we therefore we are allowing for a manual key for the manual cover. <coughs> of course, as we go through that, we also need to do the testing where we test, testing the soil and waste drainage pipe system. Well, why do we need to do that? It's important that we do that because remember that sewer, unless of course it really is in, in extraordinary circumstances, sewer will fall with gravity. It will flow on its own. No need for us to pump. But it's important that, that we do that test. And one of the ways that they do that, they, or they, they sometimes do a marble test, where they let the marble in at the one end and it should roll all the way. And they look at the time that it takes for that marble to arrive at, at its next destination. That will determine what that fall is. That determine what that fall is. So that when we are when we are busy with that, it's important that we do the test for the marble. Guys, can you just hold for me for one second, please? So, yeah, so that is in order for us to test and ensure that there's true fall in our <coughs> on our waste drainage pipe system. And the specifications also tells us the specification also tells us that we that we need to allow provisional amount for sewer connection. And that sewer connection, the provisional amount for the sewer connection is for for that section over there. Whereby the municipality will come in and do that. They might subcontract someone to that, but we need to allow that, allow the provisional amount of 3,500 Rand for the soil and waste connection to municipal services. And we also allow for profit as the contractor is allowed for that, as well as attendance, and we measure that as an item. And that will bring us to the end of this particular drain because the water supply installation, uh, we would look at at some other time as we have already measured with our 15 and 22 millimeter um, uh, pipes, as we do not also do not have sufficient information to to measure this here. But should you be asked to measure that, you should be in a position to to um, to assume what all would go in there based on on a previous drawing. That brings us to the end of that. Now, I'm supposed. Why well, I said? Uh, can you hold a sec? I was phoned by by our council, if I can call it that, to be ready within the next 20 minutes for questioning. So, when 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 we look at what we are, where we are, and what we are doing, my next section I need to start, and I wanted to start on that today, but I knew that might not be possible. Would be carpentry and joinery. Jumping from plumbing, we're going to carpentry and joinery.
So, but unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know. I think it's unfortunately we cannot get there today. We will get into that that next week. But also next week Friday, I'd like to have an assessment for us. You guys hear what I said? I'd like for us to have an assessment next week Friday. All in favour of that? It will not be. It will not be. Um, uh, all that we, I will. I will send an email later advising as to what it will be about and in what and you know, what all it we will be, be covering in that assessment. All good. So then. Uh, next week is quite hectic. Uh, I've got two submissions and uh, I think an assessment, but I'm not sure what others have to say in respect to that. Uh, okay, can you say two submissions? Is that for entrepreneurship and those? Yes, feasibility study, uh, property economics. Okay, but now if it if it is for next week, then if it, if if your submission and the whole feasibility studies takes takes up quite a bit, uh, if it is, um, I would then have to move it for some time uh, the the week thereafter. But then early uh, early in the week, then on, on a different day, possibly one afternoon. Mm. Can you confirm, Sunday? Can, can can you confirm that? Can you confirm uh, about the assessments and all of that for for next week? Can you confirm that to me via email? And, uh, and and then we'll take it from there. All right, I will do that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, I 